Ladies and gentlemen, I am JKD, the host, with my co-host. Hey, the D-O-C-L-O-V-E, it's been a long time. We shouldn't have left you without a dope show to listen to. And welcome to the CWR Clash with Randall's Pie Clash. We give you the news, reviews, previews, predictions, and results to... WWE, AEW, and any more that you request us to do. And today, well, not today, but, you know, tonight, we're giving you for the first time a review of all three, SmackDown, Raw, and NXT. And I know what you guys are thinking. SmackDown was, like, days ago, but, you know, let us give us our input, you know. Let us give us our input. And also, on our next episode, we'll also give our... Uh, we'll also give our, you know, thoughts about AEW All Out. We were able to watch it. So, on this subject, let's go ahead and get on. Let's get on with the show. All but, right. actually, before we get to it, I'm going to let you guys know, in two weeks' time, starting in two weeks, we'll be going over Impact Wrestling stuff also. We've been catching up a little bit yeah, of Impact. Impact. We've been catching up Impact, but, you know, we got to get a little notes in and stuff like that with these rivalries and stuff going on. So, in two weeks. We're gonna get over. We're gonna go uh, go over Impact stuff. It's, gonna, it's been a while since we watched all Impact, so we're gonna watch Impact for the full. We've been watching Impact, but you know we just want to get some little notes on this side of it. But now let's go ahead and get on with the show, starting with SmackDown, the September fourth edition of SmackDown on Fox. Let's go ahead and get started with the fact that the show started with your boy Roman yeah. Reigns for the year. and Paul Heyman. Now, I saw a pretty. I saw it was pretty interesting, which was pretty funny to me, is the fact that oh. Uh, Someone had made a joke saying that uh, he said he loves the fact, or she, maybe, I don't know who it is, but they said that uh, it's funny that Paul Heyman, you know, be the advocate of, like, guys who can't, make, who can't do a promo, right? Who, who can't really talk that great on the mic. But you know something I will say? Roman has gotten better over the years. Yeah. He's uh, gotten better. He's not great, great, but he's better than what but he But, man, was. that fire promo by both of them, though, man, the open SmackDown. That's what now, I'm saying. That's how, you, that's how a champion should open SmackDown right there. I like that, man. Man, I'm going to say he's ready for any of all comers, man. Like, he was like Mark Henry again or something like that, man. Yeah. Taking on all comers. I still believe Mark Henry had a better promo, man. I'm just saying. Hall of Pain gimmick, you know? Yeah, that Hall of Pain was nasty. But I like Don't the way. Don't give me the reminiscing about that. <laughs> I'll take over the whole show on just that. But, uh. Oh, yeah, don't worry. At some point, we're going to reminisce like the best times of Superstars also. Superstars in their best time, but, you know, going back to SmackDown, man, that was a good way to open SmackDown, especially the fact that he said it doesn't matter who's going to be in his way, he's going to knock him down pretty much, which I give that an A, because that was a great promo by both of them. Yeah, it definitely was. Um, Heyman pretty much, you know, capped off the reason why he uh... – Ended up uh, being with uh, Reigns, and then, like I said, Reigns, like that don't give a dang attitude. Like, I'm ready to take on, on all commas. It doesn't matter who you are. All commas. What shadow in there? Exactly. <laughs> uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the first matchup of the night. We got your boy, uh, Otis, and Tucker. Heavy Machinery taking on John Morrison and The Miz. This matchup. Was a pretty, uh, it was an okay back and forth match. Well, obviously, John Morris and the Miz getting the upper hand most of the match, getting over Tucker until they came in with Otis. And all of a sudden, Otis came in with a combat. And all of a sudden, Morrison comes in, taking the money to the bank briefcase, walking out on the Miz, which leads to Miz taking the fall from heavy machinery. Later, to be revealed to the fact that, you know, Otis had the briefcase inside the tiny money to the bank lunchbox. As Morris opened up full of, well, Otis's lunch and stapler for some real weird reason. So, uh, <laughs> it was something. Which just could be foreshadowing for Morrison to, you know, take the briefcase off of Otis, maybe? Man, look. Take that briefcase off of there, man. But, oh, yeah, uh, by the way, my grade would be a C, so I know, hey. It, I'll give it a D. I'm sick and tired of this stuff. This this is pretty much his full saving, so. And I'm sick and tired of them treating Morrison like he's some clown. I, I mean, mean, get it straight. Now, I can understand having Miz lose quite often because it really doesn't hurt him because he's in pop culture now. 
you know, he got the little TV shows and stuff like that. So they people see him more as a TV show person. They don't really see him as a wrestler anymore, not too much. But come on, man. Mm. Well, uh, uh, well, before we get to the next match, we gotta talk about the Universal Championship picture. Now we do know. Now before, yeah, now I found this pretty interesting because before SmackDown even happened, it was supposed to be a triple threat match between King Corbin, Matt Riddle, and Big E. Then Paul Heyman did say it was going to be a fatal four match, adding Sheamus to it. We let to Big E uh, have his own promo saying he's going to go for the WWE Championship. Really, when I saw this match, I said, I don't see none of them even winning. Like, the only person I could just see winning, like, is King Corbin and all four of them to get a shot. Right, right. But then all of a sudden, you know, yeah, Big E got knocked out and stuff like that, man. You know, by Sheamus with a, a pre- you know, pre-match attack, pretty much. And then all of a sudden, you come back, see Roman Reigns backstage, and you see, man, home, homeboy Jay Uso. Now, look, this is what we've been talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks. By the, and it's not just Uso. We're talking about tag teams in general. Right. You know, right. you were talking about, you know, uh, exactly. You talk about Razor. Really? That was like, and then, like, folks like FTR now. Like, one when one of them be gone, like, why not just use the other one then? Like, why you want to use them for tag team purposes only? Like, it wouldn't make sense. Exactly. Like, you could have still had Razor with, you know, Rollins' click. I mean, but at the same time, I see why Vince because, like, what purpose they serve, but still, still can have part of the click, though, man. But even in the full force, man, even though Aaron Anderson was a tag team wrestler, he had great singles matches. Um, He held a world television title on a couple of occasions. Yeah. Uh, Tony Blanchard, even though he was four horsemen, you know, U.S. champion, television title, you know, hey, you you can be a sing, you know, tag team and end up being a single. It's not, it's not that hard, guys. Now, yeah, so we do know Jay Uso was a replacement of Big E in the Fatal Four match. You know, this is not the first time Jay Uso actually had the opportunity to go for a championship, as he had the opportunity to go for the Intercontinental Champion earlier this year when he had the opportunity in that Battle Royal to take a against Daniel Bryan in uh in the tournament, but obviously he came in uh the runner up of the battle royal with Sheamus won. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to the next matchup. As our first women's matchup of the night was the women's tag team title rematch between Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax taking on the Golden Role Models. Now this lived up to be a great sequel, a great yeah. rematch to the first one. Yeah, and, I think this one might have been a better match than the uh, pay-per-view match. Might have. Yeah, so we do know that this was a pretty good matchup. And we know most of the matchups, Sasha Banks had uh, pretty much got, you know, tweaked the knee, got the knee tweaked up a little bit right. by Shayna Baszler, you know, with a submission-based style. And her, you know, uh, striking style, grappling style also, which uh, I like the style that uh, Shayna Baszler pulled out that whole match. Uh, Bailey hit a little offense. Nia Jax doing the same thing, even though you like to say she barely did anything in the match. Uh, but she did more this time. Though. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, obviously this pretty much led up to uh, what was it? Baylor got the win still for the crew. Wasn't uh, no, it was Jax got the, oh, Jax got the yeah. win because she came in with the Bailey, the yeah. Bailey, and old girl covered her. Um, Banks covered her, and you had Nia Jax kick out. Then you know both of them together try to do a move off the top rope on her. Yeah, and got stopped and cross body blocked by Nia Jax. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cross, yeah. Them. Yeah, both of them pretty much. Uh, obviously, yeah. you know, I, yeah, pretty much it went in commercial, which really that should have been the better time. But, uh, you know, pretty much they walked outside and said, like, until Bailey. Yeah, Banks was selling the knee really, really yeah. bad. It hurt. And, you know, Banks, I mean, like, Bailey act like, hey, we're uh we don't need the medical uh crew. We're gonna I'm gonna help my best friend out. Sure. And she helped her out all right, helped her to the hospital. Yeah. I mean, look, now that was like that Owen Hard, Bret Hard beat down. Man. Now I'm telling now look, I know everybody seen this. This is pretty much like what, four days ago for them, obviously. Look, I'm gonna tell you right now. Can I know, say it one time? No. Well, whatever, man. Cause I'm gonna make my point anyway, so yeah. Uh -huh. That Owen Hart, I kicked your leg out of your leg. <laughs> but either way, look, no one, no one can't say they saw it coming because okay, everybody knew, including you, because you thought that too. That Sasha Banks gonna be the one to turn on Bailey and stuff like that, and get rid of Bailey and stuff like that. 
You can't tell me you drank the same Kool-Aid as everybody else. Because look at this. Tag teams has always done that. I mean, look at this. Look, let me give you a prime example. Rusev Day, two years ago. Everybody thought Rusev was going to get rid of Aiden English. But guess what? Aiden English you know turned on Rusev. Oh, you couldn't tell me you couldn't tell me you didn't see that coming. I didn't think Aiden English was gonna be Exactly. You didn't think Aiden English would be the one to get rid of Russell, but everybody thought Russell was gonna get rid of Aiden English because all the opportunities that Aiden English cost him. Okay, no one I didn't think saying, no though. one didn't think that. But yeah, Aiden English was the one turn on, which was led to a dumb rival talks on that one night in Milwaukee. <laughs> look look <laughs> I mean, even even I saw it come. I knew Bailey was gonna be the one. But man, who knew who knew since? Just think about it. Imagine, man, 2015, NDC TakeOver Brooklyn, Sasha Banks versus Bayley. Who knew that five years later it would be Bayley and Sasha going at it again, Bayley being a heel and Sasha being the baby face. Now, let's go ahead and get to the point that most people believe that this, that she could be milking this injury until, like, Roy Rumble time. Some people believe it's probably going to be, like, after Clash of Champions leading up to Hell in a Cell. Really? Be a, I wouldn't put it on a uh, lower level pay per view. But if you're gonna put it on any lower level pay per view, I think it would. Hell in a Cell would be. I would long. like. I would really like for Sasha to milk it too. Roy Rumble, really? Yeah. Because a lot of people have been saying like, oh, oh, everybody know who they women's Roy Rumble pick gonna be Sasha Banks. So, I mean, we don't know for sure though, man. They probably gonna have her bring her back anyway. So, I mean, we don't know. The rivalry probably gonna have it in some survivors, maybe. Unless they're gonna do like a change for a champion thing again, so we're gonna see how far this goes. You know, that's that's the full statement for this situation, though. Now I'm looking forward to see how far they're gonna go with it. You didn't really like the fact they did this too fast, actually. I didn't, but I saw, but I I like the way they did. I like the way they did. But for me, uh, overall with the match and this, I actually think this should be a, a B plus actually. Yeah, definitely B plus, definitely so, B plus. Yeah. So next, thing, let's talk about the segment on who is he real. Intercontinental champion. Sammy Zane's coming to the ring. Yeah, he Sam. didn't get a haircut though, because he don't Jesus like Christ, man. My God, man. This man look like a dang zoo. This man dressed like a zookeeper in the side that man. This whole year, this man been dressing like oh my god. Yeah, Sammy Zane. Yeah, Jeff Hardy. Now you got AJ Styles coming into the mix saying that he should be the real intercontinental champion. Yeah, he's not holding the intercontinental champion though. But apparently too, AJ definitely needs Joseph Park to be with him. Yeah, you just like that face. That he made. making a facial expression. Just like that facial expression, mate. Either way, I I can pretty much smell a, a, a triple threat match coming. Now, honestly, believe it or not, I mean, obviously Sam's not going to win, for one thing, which would really suck because I really wish he had a better reign. Uh, honestly, I would either see Jeff Hardy or AJ South win it. Only cause, AJ only because... He's the only person who don't to hold the title. Jeff Hardy only because he's the only babyface in this rivalry. So for it to be an undisputed intercontinental champion, it's obviously going to be a, a triple threat match, obviously. And it's definitely most likely uh, they're trying to draw back on that Razor Ramon, Shawn Michaels storyline. So I can see that being uh, a ladder match. Bro, they're trying to do oh, yeah. To be an undisputed intercontinental champion, mm, they're milking this way too much, though. But either way, but either way, either way, but either way, that rival was pretty. I mean, uh, segment was pretty good. But I give it, uh, I give it a B minus on that one. Same thing. It, B was, minus. it was a pretty good. Cause at least, at least, Sam Zayn standing tall. Yeah, cause it was building up to that three way now. So now, speaking of a three way, let's turn the three way into a four way as we get to see the fatal four way number one contender match for the Universal Champion to face Roman. Main event, main event man. You be guys, honest, man. at the beginning, who you have to win this thing? Like the beginning, like when Jay Uso got it. Yeah, who do you have to win this thing? Jay Uso, like, like, Come even, on, man. like even look, cause like I said, I literally when I, okay, think about think about what I just said, like literally like ten minutes ago. I said all the folks they named, I didn't see none of them even winning the match. I saw none of them winning the match. Matt Riddle still new to SmackDown. King Corbin the heel, so heel versus heel would make sense. It would. Then Sheamus, man, like Sheamus, like over that world title picture now. Like, he just needs to stick with the mid cards. Big E, he still needs, he still needs like wait for a couple of months, like wait till like end of the year going to like WrestleMania. That's why I say like but Jay Uso. Hey man, I mean Jay Uso literally the only person I can see it. 
even even with Jay Uso added to the match, I can see Jay Uso winning it because we like I see cousin versus cousin type stuff. Because now I want to see if you know, the Usos probably yeah. might join Paul Heyman bloodline. They're not. I can see what's gonna happen here. They're using this to make Roman Reigns look like a bigger heel. I mean, hey, hey, I mean, her business took you know little old Cedric, but yeah, hey, hey, getting ahead of ourselves. Still, hey, it was fun. Um, Everybody know about this type of stuff, man. Great match. Um, it was a great match. It, it gets started right off the bat. Corbin, you know, getting hit. Uh, super kick, getting super kick in the jaw. Yeah. You know, um, he did. Uh, he did a bulk of the uh, action. He had um, just a whole bunch of fighting all over the place. I ain't gonna lie, um, my, I Corbin, my... Corbin was almost like the MVP of this match. Dang. I ain't gonna lie, I'm a, I had my doubts with Shemis through Jay Uso all the way in Thunderdome, bro. I had my yeah. doubts a little bit, man. But either way, Jay Uso came in with the Uso splash, getting the one, two, three, which will be Uso versus Reigns at Clash of Champions for the Universal Champion, which actually I get that match a B because it was a quick pace, man, good place, man, main event match, actually. So I, I was really into it. I was really into it, actually. So. Then he got to pin over Matt Riddle, too. So I was really surprised about that one. Yeah, I, I really would that they let him go down like that. I really thought it was going to be Corbin or either Shamus at the fall, but Matt Riddle was a little surprising, though. So I, I, I liked it, though, man. It was a good matchup, though. Man, I liked it. So SmackDown overall, man, SmackDown was really a B plus show to me. I give it a B. Man, it was a B plus show. But let's go from Friday Night SmackDown on Fox to Monday Night Raw Monday nights. on USA. Monday night. As we go ahead and kick off the show. With Randy Orton running his mouth. The guy who hear voices in his head. With the voices were just running his mouth out. Of, it's just up. Saying that he, his promo was pretty much talking about how he needs, he wants the WWE champion. He should be handed the WWE champion at Clash of Champions. What, two weeks from now? Three weeks from now? Two right. weeks from now. But until Drew McIntyre came in on that ambulance, man. Looking pissed off and running into the well now, marching to the ring, came in the ring, all of a sudden, man, missed the clothesline and then hit the Claymore. Man. Man walked out. Adam Pierce telling him to leave out, man. And all of a sudden. Hey. Hey, Drew Megatar, he 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 was he was getting his vengeance, man. I like that, man. So the only thing I don't like about stuff like this. You letting too many folks drive ambulances and stuff like that. Are these folks licensed to drive these vehicles? You know, come on, chill out, man. With the, uh, the hey, driver. maybe it could be a remote control one. Hey, man. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna tell you the truth. When I heard, first heard that siren, I thought it was gonna be a new wrestler or something. What the word? Oh, I thought it was gonna be like Keith Lee got a new entrance. Now, it was like all kinds of things went through my head. I said, it's new. Then I said, oh, is this Keith Lee's? New bro, thing? even I didn't know Drew McIntyre, bro. Then I, said, then I said, wait a minute, is that Scott Steiner? <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to our first match of the – and I'm pretty sure you're going to be liking this one. As we saw uh, the team of Apollo Crews, Ricochet, and Cedric Alexander taking on the Hurt Business MVP, United States Champion Bobby Lashley, and the gold standard Shelton Benjamin. Now, obviously, you heard from me earlier what I had said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You watched Raw already, whatever. But, obviously – the match was pretty good, actually, to be honest. Yeah. Despite the fact that the bigger story of this matchup was the fat man, man, little Cedric Alexander, man, doing his own dang thing. He finally thinking for himself, beating the heck out of Ricochet, throwing that man around. Oh, my God, man, Ricochet. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, Ricochet, man, can sell, man. Like, bro, he, may think he can make the most, like, a little hit, man, be so. Make it look devastating. Like, bro, it, but I just really pray he don't do the six minutes with Doom. That. Don't, don't, please don't sell that one too much. But either way, man. man. Lombard check was weak. <laughs> that, man. man, it would have been more devastating if it was a cruiserweight, man. A cruiserweight, oh, yeah. it, it would have been. Well, he does the cruiserweights, <laughs> man. Like... Killed all that. But it was uh, Lombard check right directly into. Uh, pay dirt. Pay dirt, man, by Benjamin. Man, awesome, man. It's, man. it's great. Uh, it reminds me, of, and I hope he has kind of like the same vibe as he uh, had in his heel run in uh, Ring of Honor. When he was a bad guy, when he yeah. had all the weight on. Yeah, man, I get a guarantee. A man with that problem, I mean, with that, that's an A to me. Her Honestly. business, the only thing. That's Her an a. man, that's business is booming. But let's go ahead and talk about the street profits taking on Andrade and Angel Garza. 
Don't get so sick of this. Along with some unexpected visitors. Comments of Raw out of nowhere. But obviously. First, let's get into this Angel Garza Andrade thing. Against Street Profits. I'm sick of it. it, it, it it's, it's getting old now. Are we a tag team? Or are we not a tag team? Well, you know, the Latin Lothario obviously left El Alidolo, man. To lead to the Street Profits. Man, hitting the cash out with the. Well, you know, you know Montez for it. Hitting it from the heavens. Nah, I was, oh man, you can't hate on that, man. You got, dude got the best frog splash in WWE, man. He got the best frog splash in WWE right now. Comment down below who you think got the best frog splash. I believe Montez Ford. I think Montez Ford got it in, man. No one can get as high as Montez. Not all the time. Of all time. Dude, Rob Van Den didn't even get that high. Rob Van Den. Rob Van Den. Rob Van Den. You're lying. You're lying through your. You're lying through this. You got to think about Rob Rob Van Den had more impact. You telling me, bro? Apparently, you haven't seen no magical street profits in that John man. Man, you're lying through your T sounds on Rob Van Den. That man had more impact. Have Rob Van Den ever did a a complete turn? Yes, he has. What you talking? I'm talking a little up. sideways turn, but not no complete turn, bro. Yes, he has. Go look it up. I'll look, I'll, I will look it up, actually, man. We're going to clarify this next episode, bro. Either way, man, I believe Montez Ford got the best frost player. Either way, that's not even the point. Because the point is that we got to see some unexpected visiting on the SmackDown Tag Team Champion, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. Here we go. The Bar 2.0, Swiss, and Japanese, man. Coming on the raw. But talking about, go ahead. I mean, talking about how they are the better tag team. As yeah, they're gonna they as they're gonna show that Nick shoot, they ain't show so far because they haven't been doing us of going to get a Lucha House party every week. Exactly. Either way, leading up to next week being a brand of brand invitational, which leads to Sheamus, Shinsuke taking on the Street Profits champion versus champion. And the reason why I was like, there you go. Uh, it's like uh, not because of the talents of Cesaro and Nakamura. It's because they don't keep up the rules of the brand extension. You might well not have a brand extension if you're not going to hold on to the rules of it. That's how I really hated that wild card rule. Right. So they just look for an excuse again to break the rules. Yeah. So, yeah. Question. Why next week when you could have it on SmackDown? Like, can Fox not have Raw Superstars on their show or something, apparently? Well, they like they did it for the women, but right. you can't. You can do that for the women, but you can't do it for the men. Like, bro. Well, you know, Raw is a bigger money maker. They feel like. Bro, man, look, King Corbin and Drew McIntyre wasn't that great of a match. To be honest, I mean, they... oh no, it sure wasn't. I mean, it was okay, man, but it wasn't like great. No, no, but you're right. Either way, look. Speaking they of women, actually need to combine those two titles. Yeah, but you know, yeah, because you were really looking forward when you saw them too, too. Yeah, then I found mm-hmm. out I don't think it's going to be for a title match. <laughs> okay, we'll be. Well, we already know that's a virus. Shit. Those two ain't going to go at it. I'll be surprised, though. But let's go ahead and get, speaking of women, you know, let's go ahead and get to our first women's match of the night. We got to see Billy Kay taking on Peyton Royce, which when I first saw this, it was really, really disappointing how they doing how they doing them, man. First of all, these new terrible, Dev, I'm sorry, man, Dev Jam, man. These are really terrible. These guys cannot make music. I'm sorry, man. Y'all need to bring back Jim Johnston, man, or yeah, CF, Johnson, CFO, CFO again. Something. Like, bro, y'all need to pay CFO then, man. Cause my God, pay those guys, bro. dude. Like, I got a lot. Peyton Rose like things are okay, but it's like not. Fit. It don't even fit her at all. It don't. Then Billy Kay like okay too, but it's just they so. Old ge- thing, it's old just so genetic. Thing fit them better. Like, bro, like Billy Kay thing song sound like a generic diva. Like a, like a generic diva diva who would just like in 2000, like five or something like that, bro. Bro, it's like so. But it's either not, way, it's nothing really to say about the match. The match actually didn't come together too well. Yeah. They tried to do some chain wrestling at the beginning and it didn't look too good. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. I had to give it an L. Man, I gave it a D. But really, to be honest, like the matchup, like, <laughs> then the fact that, like, after the matchup, they still kind of act like friends a little bit. Well, so. ain't nothing wrong with that. They've been together so, so long. So, like, bro, why would you break them up from the start then? You could just wait to the draft or something. Well, you know, they didn't hate each other. It's just, you know. Well, they should be hating another to be. I mean, whatever, man. There's nothing to say for that match, really. But, but yeah, Murphy and Dominique, 
My man Murphy pulled off a good promo, man. That actually was. That was a really. Good. That was that was a pretty good. Uh, however, Dominic, though, somewhat okay. Not 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 there yet. He's done better. Not yet. Not there. Yet, but, I mean, he's done. He's done something. He's done something though. But obviously, the match led up to a regular match and not a street fight. Obviously, with Murphy trying to be back in the good graces of the Messiah. So, but either way, it didn't have the whole family there too, which made it a C minus. So. Uh, I think having the family there. I'm talking about like the promo, like the promo. Oh, the promo part. Uh, I didn't really care too much for it. I'll give it a C. Oh, I said C minus for it, man. Oscar and Mickey James against Natalia and, and Lana. What do you think about oh, it? Yeah, about to say, you or Lana? Uh, good old Lana. I don't want to comment on that one. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm obviously looking at the fa- the fact then the fact they book a women's title match next week. I'm a, I'm only assuming this is gonna be a triple threat match for the women's title at Clash of Champions. Really? I mean, would you would you want what you want to make it a fatal four match or add Lana to the joint? Well, they're already gonna have uh they're already gonna have a triple threat possibly with AJ Styles. I mean, dude, they had like 15 million singles matches all the dang time, like bro. And she's AEW had like AEW. I mean, yeah. I know, I know it's AEW and WWE, but AEW got like AEW got like fifteen million tag team matches every dang week. Most of the tag team matches. So I mean, you dang. So I mean, why not? It wouldn't hurt to have multi man matches. Besides tag team matches, I wouldn't mind having multiple like. The problem with AEW, AEW multi man match, they don't have any kind of psychology to it. And what? I know y'all getting tired of me saying, but there's no rhyme or reason. Uh, look, but anyway, look, we got yeah, we gotta get to the point later. But man, look. It wouldn't hurt to have a triple threat, man. I mean, dang. Like, could it make it seem that way? Make Oscar look strong, saying that she's going against two people pretty much, practically, like, pra- practically a two on one on one match, pretty much. When Natalia, so I mean, I, it's nothing to say about this match, like the Billy Kane Payton Royce match. I mean, all you want, like, two rivals pretty much, like, going back and forth, seeing who's the better uh, person, so like that. So, you know, that's pretty much a C for me, honestly. Yeah. But, uh, let's. I'll say that. But yeah, let's go ahead and talk about. More of the, the hurt business. <laughs> Cedric Alexander on the VIP lounge. I really, I, and I said this during the match. I said it during the six minute tag, man. I'm liking how much WWE is doing so well with these black men, like black men, and like wrestling the storylines, too. Right. Like, no, I ain't gonna lie. I can say it's how Apollo Crews defend the U.S. title against like the hurt business, but man, like, I'm liking the fact that they put so much attention to the you know, oh. black folks in wrestling, you know? And I'm gonna tell you what like, I like about it. They paying attention to little storylines from the past because exactly he always say, "Hey man, didn't he say something about your mama to Sheldon Benjamin? Remember Sheldon Benjamin's mama, or the lady who acted that yeah. he was mama was on Raw with him for a good while. Yeah. So they always kind of hint back at that storyline, which is funny. Hey man, she was she was one and she hey she was one of the reason why he became a multiple time Intercontinental Champion. You know, man, hey. Wasn't hurt for her to bring her back and have her win the no, tattoo title or something. No, them, no, they're too serious. Hey, man, how, hey man, shoot. Her Jonah Hart been serious or two? She, you tell me she wasn't serious when she came? You tell no. me she? Man, you just hate that made him like comedy. Man, you just had to. Man, you just hate it. At least he can't enter kind of champion when she came around, didn't she? Yeah, but, every, yeah. Hey, but you know, all money ain't good money, as they say. Oh, yeah, that's true, though. Benjamin, man. you know, he was acting like he ain't really believe it, old boy. At first, he was like, man. You got to tell me something, man. I don't believe that crap. I don't know, man. The fact that I'm thinking about that, man. It kind of made me think, man. Since I was trying to pull their leg or something, man. But, like, I was doing the VIP lounge. You had the Viking Raiders, Eric Ivar, come out. And all of a sudden, you see Paulo and Ricochet come back out. Ricochet sprinting, speeding in the ring, attacking Cedric Alexander while they're attacking the rest of the Hurt Business, which led up to an eight-man tag match. The one type of tag match you dislike the most. Yes. Either way. But it made sense. Yeah, but actually, yeah, this one made made sense. sense. But obviously, this was actually a back and forth match where really the hurt business got most of the advantage, man. Tagging in and out over and over, man. Getting the getting the hurts on uh Eric. Most of the match, all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden led to like every member team getting over one of each other, especially with Ivar hitting that suicide dive, which might lead up to a little injury, you know. Right. We gotta check the injury status on him because as soon as he landed, you can see him throw the X. And you can see Cedric and uh, Alexander, I think he did one or two more moves where he tried to hurry up and quickly 
put the um, Michinoku driver on. Yeah, Ricochet. Um, yeah, Ricochet. yeah. Hit the missing. Think, yeah. Right. And I don't think Ricochet saw that Ibar got hurt. I think that's the reason why he kicked out because I don't think he saw it. But I think really it was supposed to be a kick out, but referee just had to end right. it. Right. The referee had to end it. It's supposed to be a kick out. But like I said, you have to be paying attention. And it's not really Ricochet's fault that he didn't see it. He just he just didn't see the situation. The referee probably didn't do a good job telling him, hey, we got to take this on home. So it's the referee job to uh tell him. But this will be a good way for like this might be a Ricochet and Cedric Alexander in a one-on-one match. So I'm actually proposing a kickoff match between Cedric Alexander and Ricochet one-on-one. On the kickoff show, at least. So, look and see how that go down. Overall, I get out of B minus. It was a pretty good A man tag match. All right. We have the Limitless one Keith Lee, Keith Lee against Randy Orton. Uh, Randy and uh, Keith Lee going at it again, of course. Keith Lee is dominating at the beginning. Um, he, putting that, he putting that whooping on old boy. Yeah, but, man. But Randy Orton uh, gets the upper hand. When Keith Lee runs into the uh, ring rail, I mean the outside railing, um, he tries to go for the um, he tries to go for the RKO a couple times, and Keith Lee just blocks it with pure just strength. Man. Yeah, man. Also, man, then man, one of the greatest RKO counters, man, man, he didn't stand standing up, man. I've never seen an RKO counter like that, man. But either way, man, later on in the match, uh, Randy Orton did hit the RKO, which led to. And we talk about RKO's out of nowhere, but, man, he, my guy Drew McIntyre came out with the Claymore out of nowhere, man. He don't want the Claymore for a second time. Second time on Randy Orton, which leads to showing you that Drew McIntyre is not finished with Randy Orton. He's not done with Randy Orton at all. But that's, uh, but that's I'm looking forward to see how this Duddy Todd match will go, uh, go out. But let's go ahead and move on to Raw Underground. As we see big KO... Taking on Alice of Black. Now, actually, this was a really good Raw Underground, though. Yeah, but... I really like Raw Underground. I actually. didn't like it because of this one fact. They kept cutting. Like, just go ahead and show the thing all the way straight through. They 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 did it, then they cut and went to the handicap match with, you know, uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. Against the Riot Squad. Right, against the Riot Squad. Each one of them against the Riot Squad. But, then, you know... They cut the Shayna Baszler one, went to commercial, came back, went to the Nia Jax one. Okay, yeah, we, we get the point. They just then they up. cut. Okay, we get the point. We, then you, hold on. Then they did. The, I mean, uh, oh, look, these people already watched the show. I mean, they get it. Then they did the, uh, who did the promo? Retribution. They, they then got, they went to commercial again, and then they were back. They got the point. Okay, they got the point. They, wa- they watched the show. This so is- these men for 30 straight, about 30, 20 straight minutes. I mean, they got to be tired out. Either way, Raw Underground ended with Davocado. Knocking the bowl down, obviously, which makes it your case of point. You know, during that whole situation, it was the Riot Squad taking on the tag team champion in a handicap match, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. Now, obviously, uh, Liv Morgan got the win for both, actually. Well, well somewhat. Yeah, somewhat, yeah, some, so. yeah, some for the second one. But she got the win over Shayna Baszler. But someone got the win over Nia Jax when it led to Retribution, making their first ever promo. Right. Which led to uh, two of them. Making a promo about saying uh, pretty much how uh, Retribution is going to show, you know, the, the darkness of Retribution going to lay rain, uh, rain terror all over WWE, pretty much. So, do you agree with the rumor that one of them is Mia Yim? Uh, I mean, I literally said that. I said Mia Yim was going to be one of them. All right. Said, I know the tall one. Dijakovic. Yeah, he the one had a little deep voice with a distorter over his voice. Yeah, the one in the middle, pretty much. Right. That, that was Dijakovic, uh, there. Yeah. Now, Who one was the lady did the talk. A lot of people said that was me and you. That was the lady that did the talk. That they said me. I don't think that was her. Either way, I um, know she was in the group. But anyway, we have a street fight. Oh, before up. the street fight, oh, actually, oh. uh, <laughs> well, they did say, uh, actually, they did say they did voices and like that you know has you know people really good at that type of stuff. A lot of people said that one of the voices were that someone said that it could be Mojo Rowley also part of the group. So I, I mean, I was like Mojo Rowley, I just can't see it, man. Like I guess because like Mojo Rowley is so low that I just can't see him be part of something like that. To be honest, well, I can kind of see it a little bit. So you can say 
why I've been what, stepped over and all that kind of stuff over the years. Yeah, but it's just so low. That retribution is so big that like, I just can't see it. Yeah. But either way, let's go ahead and get back there on the street talk. You know, I mean, street fight, you know. Dominic Mysterio versus Murphy. And all of them come down with kendo sticks, except for the uh, mother, Angie. Yeah, but also, man, you know, it was a back and forth matchup, man. I think the highlight of the matchup was at like, the end of it, but before that, it was like that sunset bomb through the table, though, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Got the cross body block off of the um oh yeah off, off the, the uh, off the uh, fans yeah off the Thunderdome man yeah, Thunder I was they look just like Ray Mysterio stretched out in the air like I like some Ray Mysterio type stuff right there man yeah I like that man man hit the sunset bomb through but the table man most of the black ma- most of the match was dominated by uh, uh Murphy. Buddy Murphy he did all kinds of stuff to him you know he even tried to um uh, cut his eye open uh, on his ring steps but. He was able to fight back and uh, everything. Yeah, but he couldn't fight back at the end, man. When it led to him getting tied up, man, Rey Mysterio and Dominic beating him with the, the kendo sticks, man. All of a sudden, Angie, I mean, Angela, Angie and, you know, Aaliyah comes in with the kendo sticks. Also, Angie didn't even want to do it in front of Ray. just said, man, just do it, man. All of a sudden, you know, mother and sister, man, hitting, you know, hitting Murphy, man, beating him down, too. All of a sudden, Murphy quits. Legit quits the match. Tap out. I mean, that way you know. He just says, like, "I quit." Like it was an "I quit" match. Just like that. Like, bro. <laughs> all of a sudden, you, here you go. Man, dude, this dude, you won the match. Then you let this poor man defenseless. This man just got slapped in the back of the head. Man, pretty much got crucified. Got crucified weeks. last week. He ain't let alone eight days ago. Lost the match for the team. Like, and then you're gonna take him from behind later on that night. And all of a sudden, like now you have the whole fan of beating with the stick and stuff like that, man. Like, bro. Like, you got to feel for Murphy, man. Like, yeah, please. Like, bro. Go ahead, end this. Like, please, man. Like, dang, I would, like. But I will say this about it. I'm giving it a B plus. I would not give it an A. I give it only, an A. Only because it was Murphy. Now, I'm giving it an A plus, 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 if they ever get Rollins. Yeah, it's but so they do, But they do need to end the storyline. It's, it's been going on too long. At this point, I would say. Now, this is the point in time. And we've been, I've been stressing this out a lot. I know you don't want to send it that far, but I am saying let's end it at Hell in a Cell. Yeah, I think it would be now a good this, place to end it at Hell in a Cell. You, but I don't know what all they can do to each other between their time. Exactly. Well, because like, this could lead up to a point where weeks and weeks, like Murphy's side trying to get in the good graces of like, uh, to uh, Rollins and like maybe like Adam Class Champ, he finally getting the good graces again like two weeks before Hell in the Cell leaves. Yeah, what about at what about at Hell in the Cell? Murphy turns on Rollins. Like, I mean, if Rollins lose to Rey Mysterio, he like, wait a minute, you done told me all this stuff and you can't win on that. Hey, that's what you get, man. You turn on you, mess your own disciple up, man, like that, man. Do your own disciple like that, man. See, now that is worthy of a Hell in a Cell match right there. I know you guys have heard me stress out about like worthy matches for a steel cage, hell in cell, but we're gonna get to that yeah, at some Ray point. Mysterio, R- we're gonna get to that at some point. But speaking of steel cages, man, this is gonna lead up to the next show. Also, yeah, before we get to uh, NXT, let's go. Ahead, I gotta ask. I gotta ask about uh, SmackDown though. Now we do know on SmackDown that there was a mysterious woman, a mysterious woman. Uh, pretty much walking through a promo site like that. Uh, who who do you think? I do not know. Um, Chelsea Green. It may be Vanessa Vaughn. It I may mean, be. Hey, we, we we don't know. Hey, you what do you think? I don't know, but I I would say Chelsea Green. I don't know, man. Hey. I didn't eat a Chelsea Green Vanessa. I can't even see Chelsea Green over Vanessa Bob being part of Retribution. See, I can't see Chelsea Green. Exactly. I can't see her being part of Retribution. I can't see Vanessa Bob part of Retribution. They got that uh, bougie like type gimmick and stuff like that going on. You yeah, know? But see, people don't know about uh, Born as much as they do Green. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you know, guys, you know, we're going to end it right here. This is actually part one of two of our reviews because actually, we're going to review. NXT and AEW all out together also. Right, and we're going to uh, AEW next uh, all out, and it's going to be fun, y'all. And as we talk about that, we all we will talk about this 
Well, actually, at some point, we're going to talk about the state of steel cage and hell in the cell type matchups, you know. And also, we got to break down a bracket of what's the greatest finishing move of all time. What is the greatest finishing move of all time? You guys submit your finishing move. We'll probably probably get down to, like, what, 32 finishing moves? Yeah, let's do 32 what finishing moves. We'll have, like, four categories. We'll have the impact bracket. We'll have the submission bracket, the high-flying bracket, and the miscellaneous with all of them mixed in. I think we should do striking finishes. No, that would be impact. But mm-hmm. striking finish, okay, just talking about for the miscellaneous, but okay, striking finish. And then how it So you're going to put the cobra on there? Yes. <laughs> All you <laughs> you better get out with that cobra stuff. Here's, all right, let's somebody hit you that jump for real then. At the wrong yeah, spot. Yeah, but it, it, it can't be. I'll tell you. I'm still, still going to put it on there. We're going to bid you a, a good night, y'all. Hey, subscribe, hit those likes. Uh, give us a comment. What you think the best finish move or your thoughts on Raw with SmackDown this past week? Um, hey, it's all love. It's all good. Everybody out there, you have a good night.